All right, tonight is story time. And um, I don't usually talk about this story too much um, because A, it, it seems like I'm like bloating and, I, and I'm not. But this is a fairly easy story for me to tell. Um, interesting to my viewers, I hope. And um, you'll be able to um, do a Google search and uh, read some really interesting stuff. So, <clears throat> so for those of you who don't know, I worked at uh, worked for a railroad out of Portland, Oregon. Uh, actually, it's McMinnville, south of Portland. Um, I was there just over ten years and um, hired out uh, December of 98 as a conductor uh, promoted I think it was in 2001 2000 2001 to an engineer anyway so uh, on this particular day I was a conductor on a on a train uh, we were hauling scrap steel and stuff and um, we were uh, heading south back to our Home Depot um, and this was the date was you know it was August of 2001 I think it was around the first but anyway <clears throat> we're coming down uh, the Oh, they call it um, Rex Hill. It's a, it's a, it was a good grade, large grade, right at the bottom. Had just a little bit over three percent. It was like three two at the bottom, um, and there was some, um, you know, most of it was about two five to two eight <clears throat> into three percent, right in there. Um, so we had a, we had a. A real large train this day in particular. I was a conductor, <coughs> had a different engineer. And, uh, you know, you get so in tune to um, people waving and stuff at the train that the conductor, if you got a nice crew, the conductor will say, hey, you know, kids, something like that. And he'll toot the whistle for the, uh, excuse me, I just said a bunch of honeydew melons. He'll uh, hit the whistle for the kids and wave, you know. So we were coming down uh, Rex Hill, and uh, you know, there's a lot of bends and uh, ravines and kind of canyons and stuff on Rex Hill. There's uh, quite a few trestles on uh, Rex Hill also that have no walkways. So all you have <coughs> is the trestle and the tracks across the top there's absolutely no walkways on either side uh, every so often usually out toward the middle there will be a couple little perches that that go out off the side of the track um, and I think that makes sense to most people if it doesn't message me and I'll, I'll draw a picture and put it up but anyway uh, we're on a downhill grade and uh, we're uh, trucking along and uh, we were coming around a bend um, you know the, the we we had just come around to the left and then we we're circling back to the right and going downhill and the side of the hill was close to the track that we were coming around so the engineer uh, with the nose of the cab and everything had very limited visibility I tell the engineer, I said, uh, we're coming up onto this trussel. And I was like, uh, I was like, uh, kids. And he goes, whoop, 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 you know. And I go, no, no, kids on the trussel. <clears throat> well, there were seven uh, kids on the trussel. And uh, this might die, so I might have to grab the power cord, but it says five minutes. Um, anyway, 
So anyway, there's five, seven kids on the trestle. The oldest uh, was 16, the youngest was five. And uh, they, of course, heard the whistle blow. And I'm going to pause it right here and get a cord before we mess the story up. So I'm back. I got some more honeydew. I'm coughing a little bit. I hope I'm not allergic. If I am, you might see something interesting happen on the video. But so anyway, I yell, kids. He hits the the whistle, and because uh, he can't see him, you know. So I yell, "No, kids on the trussle!" Well, at this point, the kids are <clears throat> hauling ass toward us. So we're coming like this, and we're just, you know, within feet of approaching onto the trestle. And, um, uh, six of them that uh, got off, they had bikes, fishing poles, and everything. Like I said, the oldest 16, the youngest 5. And what happened was the older kids swooped up the younger kids <clears throat> and grabbed the bikes and just started hauling ass toward us and I'm not shitting you when I say they bailed off just as we come on the trussel this leaves one child well the when I yelled no kids the look this one little boy is running at the train he slips and falls through the ties you know <clears throat> so there's nowhere for him to go. He didn't fall all the way down, you know. It was about, I don't know, 75 feet to the bottom. Maybe a little deeper. Um, but, you know, you had your ties like, you know, you had your ties like this, and he was running and slip and fell, you know. So he was like that. And he <clears throat> climbed his way up. And this point, we're on the trestle. Our in my engineer has already plugged the train, put it in an emergency, to, you know try to stop and remember we're going downhill and we were carrying scrap steel and we were very we we're large we I want to say we were ship we we're close to 100 cars <clears throat> and um, we had more than just steel but our main product was steel so anyway just as we come onto the trussel this little boy gets up and, and he's running towards us. And uh, I'm yelling, you know, stop, stop, stop. And uh, the engineer's like, you know, it's out, of, it's out of your control at that point. So this little boy slip and falls again. This time when he fell, um, we were coming at him, engineer on this side of the locomotive, conductor on this side so I sent on this side we were just straightening out onto the trussel and the kid falls down on my side so he's between the ties again like I said you know sitting between the ties and he leans down and grabs the rail and just tugs the rail so that his left shoulder was facing the locomotive on the conductor side rail you know, so if we couldn't stop totally, we would have cut him in half diagonally. And there was that small house underneath the trussel, and I can still hear the people screaming. And uh, the kids, you know, yelling and screaming and pleading and all this stuff. And I, uh, I was in a lot better shape. I wasn't nearly the weight I am now. Um, I was a uh, regular at the gym, had no kids yet, uh, well built. Um, so, you know, muscle turns to fat. So anyway, I run out the, the cab door and uh, we didn't have one of the newer um, like SD70s or something, you know, with the snub nose. We had an old SD40 that's got the, they're, it's a chopped nose and they're longer. Um, and uh, a long nose. 
so there's a cab door to come out you know come out the nose of the locomotive and there's a walkway across the front you know that's about I know it's hard to tell you but probably two, two feet wide and then there's on the side of that there's ladders that go down so you can get on and off both sides so anyway I run out the locomotive door um, and went down the stairs and I'm yelling at the kid and we're not stopping we are not stopping I grabbed the handhold with my right hand and had my foot placed on the the step my right my right foot and I swung out in front of the locomotive so I'm hanging on you know like this I've got the say that's the bar you know I've got a hold of that and I'm leaning down way down in front of the locomotive and the, I'm out in front of the plow by you know just a couple feet you know because I've got a huge reach so I'm yelling at the kid I'm yelling and I'm, I'm I said give me your hand give me your hand give me your hand and the kid reaches up like this uh, he's holding the rail and he reaches up and as soon as he reached up, I, you know, I snatched his arm, you know, just like this, and snatched his arm, but it was up here further. And I lift straight up. Well, I've got a hold. I'm still out. I just lift him straight up, and I'm fully extended, and I've got him up, <laughs> and I'm holding him. And the train, we, we rolled another, it was like 150 feet when, when they pulled the event recorder and the, see all, all your locomotives have a you know a black box and when they pulled the event recorder from where I I grabbed the kid and come to a stop was about 150 feet or so something like that and I had him you know and I set him down in front of the locomotive and I grabbed the other or, or I've got a hold of the handle and I swing out I'm standing there and he, he was seven years old, and he was, you know, a lot shorter than the platform that you could walk on. He was about just a little bit above knuckle height, and, uh, and that's what clasped the, the cars to the train. And uh, my engineer runs to the door, and he was just, you could just see in his eyes, and I go, we got him. And I don't, I'll say Ted, I'm not, I won't say his last name. Ted, he just goes ghost white. Just pasty ghost white, like holy shit. And I go, back up slowly, back up slowly. And uh, he gets back over and starts revving it up, you know, and he's trying to shove the train back, you know, just off the trussle. And uh, we had four locomotives, and so, and and we didn't run dupes. And people that are real fans will know what that is. But dupes are when you've got locomotives on each end, and the head locomotive will control the rear locomotives, you know, uh, remotely. But uh, anyway, so you know he's giving it all she's got and he's just inching back inching back inching back and he gets just clear of the trussle and I tell him I'm like that'll do I, you know I wash him out give him the hand signal and uh, he comes to the door and he he sees the kid and you could just just this I was just it was a beautiful sight so he uh, he goes I thought we got him and I go we did I got him I got him and and then I realized that he thought he was backing up off of a kid that went ran over and I felt bad you know so <clears throat> the kid these are all brothers and sisters the older kids are standing there you know and the people under the trussle are clapping and you know oh thank God thank God and um, I uh, I give him a nice scolding, you know, yell and scream and er, use my size and you know, I had a great big old dip in spitting tobacco and you know, well, 
when I picked him up, just as I was picking him up, the, the plow hit him, you know, in his shins. And it, you know, it, it scratched his shins, you know. It didn't cut him or break his legs. or It was close. It was damn close. You know, not snapping his legs. You know, um, so, and then where I grabbed his arm, I figured, you know, I wasn't going to say nothing to anybody about it. Done deal. Let's get back to work. Get home. Move on. Hooray, hurrah. And, uh, me and my engineer were talking about it. He goes, you know, you might call the manager and let him know it took place in case this kid gets home tonight and, you know, mom's helped him get his shower done and sees bruises on his shins and grab marks on his arms and says, you know, where where these come from? And, you know, he lie and say that, you know, a railroader grabbed me and was mean to me for no reason or something, you know. So I was like, yeah, that makes sense. So I, uh, I called the manager and I tell him and he was like, okay, okay. And he took it all down and I thought that was it, done enough, enough. Well, a couple days later, I come into work and there are news cameras all over. Um, it, uh, I mean, holy smokes. And people, I, when I get out of the car and I remember somebody on that that's the guy, that's the guy. And they come up and there's video cameras. I was like, holy shit. And pictures, you know, you say, it felt like you were on a runway because you could just hear the pictures going. <laughs> and uh, I get in the building and my engineer's in there into the depot and he's laughing and he's going, holy shit, you know. Well, the manager, he, he thought it was a cool story and um, talked to the GM and that, and they thought, well, yeah, you know, that'd be neat to tell the local paper what happened, and, you know, cool. So, as soon as they told the local paper, and the, the story went out, the Associated Press got a hold of it, and it went worldwide, literally worldwide. It was shown, uh, they did, they had camera crews up where this all took place, and um, it was on uh, uh, NBC World or CBS, CBS or NBC World News at night at 7 p.m. I remember all this. It was really cool. So I'm not sure how long this video is. Um, I'm going to try to end it here real quick. But uh, anyway, um, I got a lot of publicity out of this and I didn't want it. I was called a hero and I didn't want it. I did what anybody else would have done in my position. I truly feel that to this day. I feel that. Um, and this kid will go on to do something great. I know he will. I know his name. I can't give his name. If you go online and search Eric, and I hate to give up my last, last name. Actually, if you want to know more, at, uh, message me and I'll, I'll give you my, my last name. Um, or you can type in, try to type in, you know. I know the name of one of the, one of the, one of the stories is uh, called, uh, I'll tell you. A man's reach should exceed a locomotive. So, you can type that in your Google search engine. And uh, I probably just gave you my name. Maybe not. Hopefully I didn't. But uh, my, my good friends know it. Um, I was treated to a lot of good things. Flown to Washington, D.C. I got a uh, transportation uh, medal. Um, I was the first person in the United States of America to receive that medal in 15 years. 
Um, it would have been presented to me by the president, but because of 9-11, he was busy. I flew into D.C. just after all this stuff took place. I seen the Pentagon while it was in shambles. Um, I had pictures of all this, but my sister's taken all my pictures, uh, and I can't get them back from her. We don't talk. I don't know why she took them. They were at my mom's, but when they moved my mom... Anyway, that's another story. So, uh, uh, I got a, a Medal of Valor from uh, the county that I lived in. Um, I got another medal, and I, I have these, and they're all packed away, and I'll get them out one day, and I can get them out sooner if you guys want to see them. You know, if you let me know, I'll get them all out. Um, but the one that's real close to my heart is uh, the Carnegie uh, Medal. It's Carnegie Hero Foundation, and it's a big, heavy medal. It came with a, a nice cash um, award also. I was also treated by the American Red Cross. I've got once a year they do a breakfast to champions for people that have uh, done heroic things, saved a life somehow, some way. Um, and I've got a Wheaties box with my picture on it. Um, I got a award from Oregon, from the state of Oregon, that did not even exist. They made up the award. I was the first recipient of it. And it's a kind of a traffic safety heroes award. I went to a, a lodge in Oregon, and I had a three night uh, um, or two night, three days, two nights stay there. And um, it was a convention they were having, and I was one of the speakers at the convention. Um, a lot of neat things come out of that. And it's a neat story, so I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to hope my camera holds up here. The shaky cam a little bit. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> Three minutes. I do have one award from the, the railroad. Uh, Genesee in Wyoming. For life-saving heroics. And uh, this big... <laughs> solid crystal bowl sits on it like that so that's my story for tonight I hope you enjoyed it I've got plenty more um, I've got a lot of stories from the railroad some good some bad some uh, tragic some uh, some others uh, that maybe I'll tell that are hard to listen to. Um, so, until the next story, thank you for listening, thank you for watching. If you like what you heard, please subscribe. And uh, remember, you guys are always in my thoughts and prayers. Uh, God bless. Have a great day tomorrow. And uh, I'll see you again tomorrow with a new video.